Hello, friends. Welcome again to another edition of Digging Disciples. I am your host, John Grigsby, and I am excited to share with you today the fourth session of sharing Jesus without fear. And as I've said before, I've I've took most of this material from Bill Fay's book, Share Jesus Without Fear. Highly suggest that you uh, get this book. There's so much more that Bill talks about than we will cover in these sessions together. But it has been a very rewarding time for me. I've shared this with my Sunday school class. I've shared this with our adult Bible study class on Wednesday nights and with my D group. So I have uh, had the opportunity to share this and uh, I am really, it has blessed me. If nothing else, it has blessed me. Uh, But I've enjoyed seeing some others who see, okay, you know, Bill lays this out in such a simple way that it it makes it more simple to share the good news of Jesus. And and that's what it should be. You know, it's, it's really not complicated. We make it complicated. But in the simplest terms, we just have to believe with childlike faith. So today I'd like to talk about the fourth session, which is the decision. And in that, I'd like to go back and cover just a few, actually all four of the sessions in which we uh, started. So the first session, we talked about reasons why people do not share their faith in Jesus. There's there's valid reasons that some people have in their minds and their hearts and their thoughts. Some of them are, are, like I say, valid. Some of them are maybe not, like the last one of which I don't know how, because that one we tried to solve through these sessions that we've been sharing. The second session, we talked about uh, the probing questions, uh, talking to people and and just asking them where they're at. You know, do you have any kind of spiritual beliefs to you? Who is Jesus? You know, asking these questions just to see where they're at. And let me just share again. These are, do not think that if you ask these questions, you'll get a result that you're looking for. That is not the, the thought at all. The thought is you have a a set of questions that you can use, use them as you see fit, as seen necessary. And then at the bottom, remember it takes an average of 7.6 times for someone to hear the gospel before they receive it, 7.6 times. So if you're the first or second person to share Jesus with somebody, they may reject him. They're not rejecting you, they're rejecting Jesus. If you're an eighth or ninth person sharing with Jesus with somebody, you might be the one that hears in prayer, pray the prayer of accepting Jesus as their Savior. So the third session, we talked about the power of Scripture. How to use Scripture to explain Jesus to people so they understand how it's basically sharing the good news. The good news is Jesus. And how do you share that? And we talked about that. There's, I have a couple of examples on which scriptures you could use, but more importantly, the part is that you just use something that you feel comfortable with sharing with the person that you're sharing with. And that they clearly understand that we are all sinners. We're all sinners. And because of sin, we will die. But Jesus died for our sins. And if we confess with our mouth, then he will save us and we'll have peace with God. So take that. You can print this out, put it in your Bible, use it as a cheat sheet. I would love it if you'd mark up your Bible with the scriptures that you'd like to talk about. And you can go back and look at the session three on how to do that. And today is the decision. You've asked those probing questions. You've read the scripture to, or they've read the scripture. And now they understand that they do need a savior. And so you ask them after, after reading those scriptures, I ask the following questions here again, it's not a formula, just some, pro, some questions to ask to see if they're ready to ask Jesus in their heart. So the first question is simply, are you a sinner? And if they understand the gospel, they understand that we are all sinners. Second question is, do you need and want forgiveness of your sins? If I'm a sinner, 
I do need forgiveness. I do need someone to do that for me. Yes. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose from the dead on the third day? That paid for your sins. Yes, I understand that. Are you willing to surrender your life for Jesus? When we, if this is not, not just a punch a ticket, get out of hell for free thing. It's we are giving our heart and our life to Jesus. And the fifth question is, are you ready to invite Jesus into your life and into your heart? Now, at this point, be quiet. Ask that question and just be quiet. Don't use your words. Just pray silently. Pray silently for the Holy Spirit to work. Pray silently for them to understand and process and for them to actually pray and be talking with, with God. It's a very supernatural thing that's happening at this very moment. <laughs> and the most we can do is get in the way. <laughs> I don't want to get in the way. <laughs> so I'm just going to be quiet. <clears throat> and then they're going to answer you. They're going to give you a response. Do you want to ask Jesus into your life and into your heart? And they've got, I think, three responses. One is no. And if they say no, you're not mad. They're not rejecting you. They're still not ready. They're not ready to accept Jesus into their heart. It's a decision they have to make for themselves. Say, okay, I'll be praying for you and do. Don't just tell them you will, but pray for them. And say, I'll help you answer any questions that will help you. Help them. They're not ready yet. Help them. Second response is yes. Then let them pray. The prayer is not important. The words are not important. It, the important part is they've made a decision in their heart and they're praying to the God alone who can save them. <laughs> there again, it's between them and God. You, you're out of the way. You have did your part. You just sit back and watch the miracle that is happening at this point. And the third response could be, yes, but I don't know what to pray. I've had this with, with some people in my life. They've said, I don't, I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray it. Well, you just offer them the words similar to what we have below here. Let them repeat it. They have to say it out loud with their mouth. They can't let you pray for them. You can't pray for them. Their mama, their daddy, their grandma, their uncle, those people can't pray for them. It is a personal decision and a personal response. You can help them with the words, but the decision, I believe, is already made in their heart. But as it says in Romans, is you have to confess with your mouth. You do have to confess with your mouth. I think there's a reason that we do that. And the Bible says to do that. Confess with our mouth. And after that, you celebrate. They have accepted God. They're new creature. They are born again at that point. They are born again. That is cause for celebration. Cause for celebration. Remember, don't you take the credit. I didn't take the credit. Don't let me take the credit. Give God the credit. I was just a tool to bring someone to the saving grace, saving knowledge of grace and salvation. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a tool. God uses us as mouthpieces, as page turners. <laughs> Remember, when it comes to the power of scripture, we're just page turners. And when it comes time to the decision, we're just conduits to get them to, to pray in the prayer that they want to pray. They, will, they should want to pray. And that's their decision. If you have any questions on any of this, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, for me, this has been a wonderful wonderful reminder of how to share Jesus without fear. It truly has been. And now, what I really hope is that you don't just take this information as, as good information. You put it in your pipe and walk around with it like a, like a shiny coin or something. Now, I hope it's useful to you. That's what we were being called. Remember, we started Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Go make disciples. Go make disciples of all nations. That's our call. That's our duty. That's what we've been told to do 
by the one who saved us. And shame on us if we don't do that. We'll be, we will be held account, accountable for it one of these days. I don't want to be ashamed when I get to heaven. And Jesus said, what did you do for me? I said, well, I accepted you. I don't think that's the response he's looking for. So I, I pray that you'll take this message and you'll use it. And I also pray for you as you navigate the seasons of life. God bless.